So now we finally get to talk about commits, our good friend. We've been working with commits for quite a long time. We've seen these commit hashes, but now let's talk about the actual underlying structure of the git object, the commit. So when we make a commit, uh, git generates a new commit git object, and it stores that just like it stores all of the other objects, the blobs and trees we've seen. It hashes them, it makes a file over here in the objects directory. First two digits make a folder inside of that 38 digits of the hash that are remaining are the name of that encrypted binary compressed file. Okay, so commits are going to be stored in there as well. What we haven't really talked about is what a commit actually contains. We know that it contains a message because we provide that message. Uh, we've seen that it includes the author, but what we have not really talked about is the fact that commits also include a reference to a parent commit. We've mentioned that, uh, but we haven't gone into a ton of detail. So that's a reference to the hash of the commit that came before. So really all we need to get the entire chain, the entire history of a git repo is just a commit that links back to a parent. And then we can go look at that parent, it links back to another parent, and that links back to another parent. Anyway, commits have a reference to the parent commit, but also they have a reference to a tree object. So this tree object is just like the tree objects that we've seen, like this. Uh, where a tree can reference other trees and also blobs. So you can visualize it this way instead. Every commit has a hash, right? All the contents are hashed to generate this. Uh, there is the parent at the beginning of this repo. There's no history. So the parent just doesn't exist on this one commit. There's an author, committer, there's a message. But the tree is the most important part that I want to talk about. When we run git commit, git creates this new commit object for us. And it sets the parent to be the current head commit. So that makes sense probably, right? If we make a new commit, it's going to have the parent of our current head. So it would go over here and point back to this one. Um, but also the tree that it stores in this commit, the tree is the current content of the index, the staging area. So there's an actual index file, but basically Everything that we have worked on, all our, our changes, everything we have staged and prepared to commit, when we actually run git commit, a tree is generated. So that tree will reflect the contents of the index. And then that is included in the commit. Then we have the parent that references the parent commits. So that's, that's giving us the history, right? So this is giving us the actual contents of the directory, our changes, and that tree is going to include most likely other trees and blobs. And then there's the metadata author committer message. And then that whole thing is hashed and we end up with this commit hash. So if I make a new commit, remember what I said here that when we make a new commit, uh, the head commit is going to be the parent of that new commit. So this was head right here. Now head is here and it points back. This commit refers back to the commit before it's the parent. So every commit is tied to a tree and that tree is something that represents the structure of the application and in turn the blobs that it contains all the data in the files. So we could go look at any commit and we can see that tree uh, for that commit, we can take a look, we can inspect it. And then of course, if we check out a commit, uh, if we make a new branch based upon a commit, Git is going to take that tree and use it as the basis for our working directory. So let me demonstrate that. Um, let me just show you an example here, just another diagram. So here's this structure we've talked about, trees referring to blobs and to trees, but a commit includes one tree. So this would be the state of our application at this time of the commit. And then we have the commit message and so on. So every commit has a tree like that. So here's a much more expanded diagram uh, that just shows the, the details, right? If you look at the hashes all match. So this commit, it's tree, it's snapshot C387. That's this one right here. And then the tree has blobs and trees and so on. So let me try uh, to demonstrate this. Let's make a simple repo. We'll just start from, well, we've got this dog repo already, right? This one I have open. I haven't made any commits. So if you wanna follow along, right? If you have a new repo, you haven't made any commits, that will work for us. So right now there are no commit objects. I have added manually, uh, I've added some blobs, but you don't need those for this demonstration. What we do need to do is make an initial commit. So I have this one file dogs.txt. Why don't I just commit that? So I'll do something like git add dogs.txt, git commit, 
add docs file or initial commit or something. Okay, so I just made a commit. And if we look at that commit with git log, we see the commit hash, we see the author, we see the date and the message. But there is more to this commit. If I copy this hash, we can use the same command we've seen, cat file, git cat file, and then let's do dash t for type. And we see that we have a commit object. Also, 79DD6, let's remember that. Over here, what do we have? 79, whoops, there it is, in the objects directory of .git, DD6. This is where my commit is stored. But I can actually view much more about it. I can pretty print it using git cat file dash p, which we've also seen. We printed trees, we printed objects, or rather blobs. They're all objects. This is a commit. And now what we see is a little bit different. When we pretty print this commit hash, we actually end up seeing the tree. So remember, every commit contains a reference to a tree. And this tree represents the structure of our application, the snapshot of our directory, the app, at this point in time when we made the commit. So we could copy this, and you'll see different hashes, almost guaranteed. But if you are following along, we can verify that is indeed a tree, right? If we do git cat file dash t for type, it's a tree. But I can also do git cat file dash p. And we see, okay, here's the output, or here's the contents, rather, of the tree. Just one file, dogs.txt. But now, let's make a second commit, and let's do some other changes. Why don't we make another file in here? So uh, what do we have? Dogs. Let's just do, you know, cats. I'll just do it from the command line. So I'm going to do echo um, meow, meow. And I'll redirect that into a cats.txt file. You could also just make that file yourself. Uh, oh, I don't have the directory open here. I have just .git. But anyway, I have a file. If we look at it, it says meow meow. All right, so now if I do a git status, I'll add that cats.txt, and then I'll commit. Uh, let's just go with add cats file. Okay, so now we have two commits, right? Our first one, but this new second one. If I copy this hash, first of all, 5119, we'll see that over here somewhere. I may need to refresh this. Where are you? Here it is, 5119. All right, so this is that commit object stored here. Okay, so if we use cat file, git cat dash file, we do dash t, we see this is indeed a commit. But if I do the same thing with dash p, now we see it has a parent commit. And this parent commit is the only other commit we have. Hopefully you remember it was 79DD. That is correct. It's referencing the commit that we made first. There's only two. So this was the first one. And it has a reference to a tree. And this is a different tree. If I inspect this tree, git cat-file-p, and then I don't need the whole thing, but just a part of this hash for the tree. Now we see it has two blobs, OK? So the first tree from the first commit, that snapshot had one blob for one dogs file. That's all we had. This one, this tree, has two blobs. But what's important to note, we didn't change this dogs file. So git doesn't give us a new blob. It keeps the same object. It has the same hash, meaning it didn't change. I can prove this. So we have fd91. If I go look at this other commit, so the parent commit, this is going to be, ugh, I'm scared to do this because it's just so many commit hashes and so many crazy looking SHA hashes. But if I look at this earlier commit, the first one, git cat file dash p, and then we look at that tree, git cat file dash p with a tree, what do we see? One blob. This was the first snapshot I made. We only had the dogs file, fd91. So here, my second commit, we looked at the tree, the snapshot, and there was one blob for cats, that's new, but the second blob is for dogs, and it still is FD915 because it never changed. But now if I change that file, right, I do something different in the dogs file, like I change it to be Sirius Black, character from Harry Potter. So that's the new contents of the dogs file. Well now, if I add that change, git add dogs, git commit dash M, 
uh, update dogs file. If I commit, well, I just did commit, and I look at that new commit, this one here, for EC and so on, if I take a look with git cat-file-p, all right, it's referencing the parent commit that was the second commit, 5119, I just remember those numbers, and this tree now, 0e37, blah, blah, if we inspect that, cat file dash p, it's still two blobs, one for dogs and one for cats, but notice here, 04998, that is a new hash for the dogs blob, versus, if we go back up to the earlier one, it used to be, uh, so many, here we are, fd915. So Git's not going to come up with new hashes and you know change these objects if it doesn't need to. If nothing changed in those files, the contents are the same. A blob stores the contents of a file. So right now, Git is storing this version of the file in one blob, and then it's storing this version of the file in another blob. And then the trees will reference one of those versions depending on you know what was in that snapshot when I made the commit. So I'm hoping maybe some of this is starting to make sense. If not, you know, the good news is you could still use Git and not have to worry about this. Um, but I, this is about as far as I want to go in exploring all of this. Um, there are other things we can do. You know, we can actually make commits and generate trees uh, in the same way that we created blobs from scratch. But I think this is a good place to stop. Okay, so every commit includes a reference to a parent, unless it's the first commit, there is no parent, and then a tree. So that's another type of Git object we've seen. The tree will contain uh, a bunch of references, potentially, to other trees, if it's a subdirectory, or to blobs. And a blob contains file contents. So a tree is the, the place where we store, or Git stores the file name corresponding to a blob. And then everything's hashed. Blobs get hashed, trees get hashed, commits get hashed, and Git uses those hashes uh, to easily determine if something has changed, because you change a single character in a file, that blob's hash is different. You change something in a directory, that tree's hash is different. Um, but also, it uses those hashes as keys so that it can easily retrieve things, right? Keys are supposed to be unique in a key value data store. So if I say, git, give me the information from this commit, fa4, it can easily go and find that, or give me the information for this blob. We usually don't do that on a blob basis, but Git does that. Git will restore contents in a directory based upon the tree in a commit. So when I switch branches, it's going to look at the tip of a branch. What's that commit? Okay, what's the tree in that commit? Let's take that and we're going to restore the files in the working directory based upon the state in that tree. So that's kind of the underlying workflow that Git goes through. Now we're skipping a lot of stuff, uh, but that's the basic idea with Git objects, with hashing, commits, trees, blobs. There's also this fourth type, the annotated tag. We have talked about tags and annotated tags. Uh, not a big deal. <laughs> this image loads here. Uh, they're not as important right now to understanding how all this works, but it's another type of Git object. They're hashed, they're stored in the objects directory. Uh, they include metadata, who made the tag, uh, the date, uh, a tag message, just like a commit, except that a tag is just a, a pointer to a particular commit. It is not an actual commit itself. So it kind of stores a reference to a commit, and a commit stores a reference to a tree, and a tree stores references to blobs. All right, I applaud you if you made it through all of this. I hope some of it made sense.